What if I told you that no matter what you are going through right now, God has a plan to turn your story around for good? What if I told you that He can take your pain and turn it into purpose, your mess and turn it into a message, your test and turn it into a testimony? What if you knew that God could use your brokenness and turn it into blessings, your weakness and turn it into strength, your failure and turn it into success? It sounds too good to be true, right? Well, in this video, we will show you how God can do all of that and more. We will share some amazing stories of people who experienced God's transforming power in their lives. We will also reveal some biblical principles and promises that will help you to trust God and cooperate with Him in the process of change. By the end of this video, you will be inspired and encouraged to believe and see God turn your own story around for good. The year was 701 BC, and the mighty Assyrian army was sweeping through the lands of Judah, capturing one fortified city after another. The king of Assyria, Sennacherib, had his eyes set on the prize, Jerusalem, the capital city and holy city of God's people. Isn't it intriguing how many nations and peoples have been keen on taking over Jerusalem? It seems that the so-called small city isn't really as small as everyone tries to make us believe it is. It's simple. The devil knows that this is God's prized land, and Jerusalem is the heart of it all. So no matter how many times the enemy tries and how many forces he'll gather, they will never prevail against God's people or his holy city. But back to our story. So Sennacherib sent his chief commander along with a large force to intimidate and threaten King Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem. The commander stood outside the city wall and shouted in Hebrew, mocking and taunting Hezekiah and his God. He said that no God of any nation could save them from the Assyrian power and that they should surrender and accept the terms of Sennacherib. He even went so far as to say that they would face a terrible siege and famine, resulting in eating their own dung and drinking their own urine. He accused Hezekiah of deception, claiming that the Lord would not deliver them. The people of Jerusalem, though terrified by these threats, obeyed Hezekiah's command to remain silent and report to him what they had heard. In response, Hezekiah tore his clothes and put on sackcloth, a sign of mourning and repentance. He went to the temple of the Lord and sent officials to Isaiah the prophet, asking him to pray for them and seek a message from the Lord. Isaiah's message brought assurance, saying that the Lord had heard the blasphemy of the Assyrian commander. The Lord promised to put a spirit in Sennacherib that would force him to return to his own land, where he would meet his demise. A short while later, Sennacherib received news of the Ethiopian king's approach and decided to withdraw from Jerusalem for a time. Still, he couldn't resist sending a letter to Hezekiah, repeating his threats and insults. He warned of his return to destroy Jerusalem, stating that Hezekiah should not trust in the Lord or Isaiah's words. Hezekiah took the letter to the temple of the Lord, spreading it before him and praying earnestly for salvation from Sennacherib. He acknowledged that Sennacherib had defied not only him, but also the living God, the only one capable of delivering them. Then Hezekiah implored God to display his glory and power by saving Jerusalem for his own sake and for the sake of his people. The Lord answered Hezekiah's prayer through Isaiah the prophet, proclaiming that Sennacherib had mocked and reproached him but would not succeed. The Lord declared that he would defend Jerusalem for his own sake and for the sake of David, his servant. He promised to send an angel to destroy the Assyrian army in a single night and that Sennacherib would return to his land only to be killed by his own sons. That very night, the angel of the Lord struck down 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. When Sennacherib awoke to the gruesome sight the next morning, he broke camp and fled back to Nineveh, his capital city. There, as he worshipped in the temple of his god Nisroch, his sons assassinated him. They escaped to the land of Ararat, while another son became king in his place. The Lord's promise through Isaiah had been fulfilled, saving Jerusalem from Sennacherib's hand. God demonstrated his faithfulness, power, sovereignty, and righteousness over all nations and their gods. 
they could not stand before him or resist his will. This story is found in Isaiah 36 through 37. It's a story of how God turned a helpless situation around for his people. You could come across this story while reading your Bible and then just continue on. However, there is something God wants you to see here and lead you down a new path in life where you too can see God turn your own story around for good. Let us start with the fact that challenges often come in life, not necessarily as a result of any offense towards anyone or as repercussion for something you did. Some challenges will come your way just simply because you exist and for who you are. We saw in the case of Judah, and the Assyrian king, that they never did anything to him to stir him up like this. Nonetheless, he still showed up, conquering their territories, town by town, set on conquering Jerusalem. Similarly, you may have wondered why certain attacks have happened in your life. Why did that relationship end? Why did that person have to hurt me? Why is my life so different and why do I put so much in and get so little out of life? Why are things not working for me and why is it taking so long for my own testimony to come? I can't tell you why everything in your life is the way it is. You may be where you are now, not because you sinned or because you offended anyone, but because of the wickedness of the enemy. The Bible tells us that the devil is always out and about, seeking whom to devour. And who are his targets? God's children. By simply being a child of God who has made up your mind to follow Jesus, you make yourself an automatic target of Satan's attacks. But also, your current situation might just be a part of the story leading to the testimony of your own breakthrough. One day, Jesus and his disciples saw a blind man, and his disciples asked Jesus if the man was blind because of his parents' sins or his own sins. And Jesus replied by saying, that this man's situation had nothing to do with either his sins or his parents. Rather, this situation was one God was going to use for his glory. In other words, Satan was having a field day in this person's life, but God had a plan to use that for his glory. And guess what happened? Jesus healed the man completely that day. That man probably left his home that day, thinking it would be another day to be blind and beg for alms for people. Little did he know that God had marked that day for his change of story. And when he met Jesus, his story was changed for good. Think about the brightness of light from a light bulb. You may never really appreciate that light in the daytime when everywhere is bright. However, when the night comes, you need another light. The darker the night, the brighter the light bulb is. Similarly, I want you to believe that no matter what may be behind what you are going through today, God can and will use it to demonstrate His glory in your life. King Hezekiah from our story probably never knew how God was going to change the story, but he was confident that God would do it. His confidence was so strong that even the enemy noticed it. The enemy knew he couldn't break the king's confidence, so instead, he tried to turn the heart of the people from the king by telling them that their king was deceiving them. Isn't this how the devil tries to deceive us? He mounts pressures on us by showing us how successful those who turn from God are. He shows us how wonderful it would be to choose other alternatives besides God. But if anyone gives in to Satan's offers, they are selling themselves and surrendering themselves into slavery. But thank God for King Hezekiah. He told the people not to answer the enemy. And after the enemy finished threatening them, they turned to God. Beloved, who do you turn to in the day of your adversity? You cannot expect God to turn your story around if God isn't the one you surrender that story to. Some people take their problems to other people and expect God to change the situation for good. However, the truth is that only those who surrender their story to God get to see God in action. Psalm 55:22 says, Cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Who will God sustain? Those who cast their cares on Him. Casting your cares means you surrender that story to God and you trust His process 
You take your hands off the wheels and you let Him drive. You stop fighting and you let God take the field. You start rejoicing on your way to your breakthrough like you already have it. This, my friend, is how you see God turn things around. And this was what Hezekiah and the people of Judah did. They turned to the Lord, showed Him the enemy's threats, and waited for God's answers. And because they stepped back for God to take over, they saw a miracle like they'd never witnessed before. In one night, God cleared out 185,000 enemies for His children's sake. It's time to step back, my friend. Time to let your faith in God speak. Pray about that situation. Get God's promise about it and hang on to it in faith. Then walk in that faith, speaking and acting accordingly. Then watch God turn your entire life around. It may take some time, but God never fails. You are about to come into a better season of your life. Don't let the devil question your confidence in God. Don't let him discourage you because it's taking so much time. God is never late and he never fails. Life's journey is often met with storms that threaten to derail our faith and darken our hope. Yet nestled within these trials is the promise of a divine turnaround, a metamorphosis orchestrated by God when we lay our trust in Him. The theme of trust is a profound one. It's the golden thread that weaves through the tapestry of our relationship with God. Trust is the vessel that carries us through the tempests of life into the harbors of divine grace and transformation. In the heart of adversity, it may seem as though the heavens are silent and the tapestry of our lives is unraveling. Yet there lies an eternal promise in Jeremiah 32:17, where it's proclaimed, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. This verse isn't just merely a collection of words, but a living testament of God's boundless power and His ability to transcend the laws of nature, to mend the unmendable, to restore the irreplaceable. The essence of a divine turnaround begins when we anchor our trust in God, allowing His Word to be the compass that navigates us through the thickets of despair and uncertainty. It's about delving into a narrative larger than our own, where God is the author, intricately penning down each chapter with a purpose, even when the plot seems to be veiled in mystery. In the arena of faith, trust is our shield and God's Word is our sword. Embracing the Word of God is akin to planting seeds of faith in the fertile soil of our hearts. As these seeds sprout, they burgeon into robust trees of hope, their roots delving deep into the spiritual reservoir of God's promises, their branches reaching out towards the heavens as if in a silent yet profound chorus of trust. Imagine your life as a canvas, each stroke of adversity is but a part of a divine masterpiece that God is crafting. When we trust Him, we're handing over the brush to the master artist, allowing Him to turn the seemingly disjointed and dark strokes into a masterpiece imbued with purpose and hope. Let's delve into the reservoir of faith. Let the living waters of God's Word rejuvenate our trust and witness the divine orchestration of turnaround in our lives. As we embark on this spiritual voyage, let's be still and know that He is God and He is in the business of turning things around, molding trials into testimonies, sorrows into joy when we trust in Him. The beauty of trust is that it unveils the divine narrative where God is the central character, always ready, always able to turn things around for our good. The profound truth is, the storm isn't your ending. It's merely a passage, a passage that invites you to witness the miraculous hand of God as He calms the storm and navigates you to the shores of hope. It's in the heart of these adversities that God's promise rings true, for Psalm 91, 4 reminds us, He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. It's an invitation to replace fear with faith uncertainty with trust, 
Every challenge you face is an opportunity for God to manifest His unyielding love and power in your life. It's a divine dance that unfolds as you step back and allow God to lead. As Proverbs 3, 5-6 urges, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. When the world trembles beneath your feet, when the skies are overcast with despair, it's a clarion call to cast your gaze heavenward, to trust in God whose love is steadfast, whose power is unmatched, and whose wisdom is unsearchable. It's not a blind trust, but a faith rooted in the character of God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. As you traverse through the seasons of life, with each high and low, may your heart find solace in the absolute trust in God. The journey might be fraught with trials, yet with every step taken in faith, watch as the master of the universe meticulously turns things around. With eyes fixed on God, behold the unfolding of a divine narrative that turns ashes into beauty, despair into hope, and trials into testimonies. So, dear friends, amidst life's unforeseeable twists and turns, let's anchor our trust in God. Witness the awe-inspiring, life-transforming power of trust as God orchestrates a symphony of grace that turns your life into a testament of His unfailing love and power. Remember, in the realm of trust, God moves mightily. And in the theater of faith, the impossible becomes possible. Consider a mighty oak tree. It stands tall, not because it's above the adversities of weather, but because it's deeply rooted in a foundation that holds it firm, come rain or shine. Similarly, our trust in God is that deep-rooted foundation that holds us strong amidst the adversities of life. The more we trust, the stronger and deeper our roots grow into the love and faithfulness of God. Our faith can be likened to a small mustard seed which, when planted, grows into a larger tree. The Bible says in Matthew 17, 20, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. This is the potential of a trusting heart. With trust in God, we can move the mountains of fear, doubt, and anxiety that often block our path. Now envision a potter at work, meticulously shaping and molding the clay at his wheel. Each spin of the wheel, each touch of his hands, transforms the lump of clay into a vessel of purpose and beauty. Our lives are like that clay, and God is the divine potter. As we trust Him, He molds our circumstances, turning trials into testimonies, fears into faith, and pain into purpose. God's Word in Romans 8.28 says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. When we trust God, we align ourselves with His divine craftsmanship, allowing Him to turn around every situation for our good. Our trust is the catalyst for divine turnaround. Imagine a painter before a canvas. With every stroke of his brush, he brings color, form, and narrative to what was once a blank space. Our trust in God invites Him to paint the canvas of our lives with strokes of grace, mercy, and love, turning the blank spaces of our despair into beautiful landscapes of hope and promise. When we trust God, we unlock a peace that surpasses understanding, a joy that overflows, and a hope that is steadfast. As we lean on Him amidst the chaos, watch how He turns things around, painting our lives with the vibrant colors of His love and faithfulness, leading us through paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Our trust is not in vain. It's the doorway to divine turnaround. So let's anchor our hearts in trust and watch in awe as God turns things around, leading us to calm shores and bright days ahead. The narrative of Abraham and Sarah is a testament to the power of unwavering trust. The barrenness that seemed like an endless curse was but a prelude to the miraculous birth of Isaac. The long wait 
was not a void. It was a sacred space where trust was nurtured, faith was reaffirmed, and patience was cultivated. Every passing moment was a step towards the divine promise that was to manifest in God's perfect timing. The poignant tale of Jabez, too, resonates with the essence of trust. His life, once synonymous with sorrow, witnessed a dawn of joy when he entrusted his cause to the divine. The prayer of Jabez, a cry from the depths of despair, reached the heavens, and the response was a life reimagined, a destiny rewritten. The crucible of trust is often heated by the flames of adversity, yet it's within this crucible that our faith is purified, our hope is fortified, and our spirits are invigorated. As mentioned in 1 Peter 5.7, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. It's a divine invitation to lay down our burdens at His feet and to witness how intricately and beautifully He orchestrates the symphony of our life. The metaphor of John 16.21, where the anguish of a woman in labor is juxtaposed with the joy of birth, encapsulates the essence of our trials. The pain endured is ephemeral, but the joy that follows is eternal. It's a gentle reminder that on the other side of our enduring patience lies a realm of endless joy and divine blessings. Our journey may sometimes be strewn with thorns of doubt, fear, and impatience. Yet amidst this thorny path lies the rose of God's promise, waiting to bloom in the garden of our trust. As Psalm 56, 8 illustrates, you keep track of all my sorrows. You've collected all my tears in your bottle. You've recorded each one in your book. Every tear shed, every prayer whispered is accounted for in the divine ledger. Our communication with God through prayers and reflections is not a monologue, but a dialogue. It's an avenue to pour out our hearts, to vocalize our fears, and to affirm our trust. This divine dialogue strengthens our resolve, clears our vision, and deepens our trust. The hardships you face, the unknown that looms, they're not dead ends, but detours orchestrated by God to lead you to your destiny. Each trial is an opportunity for trust. It's not about a blind leap into the void, but a knowing step into the light of God's love. Every situation, no matter how bleak, holds a silver lining, a divine blueprint awaiting the trust-filled eyes to discern. God's promises are not mere platitudes, but power-packed truths. They're not just to be read, but to be lived, to be anchored in. Here's a gentle nudge to dive into the scripture, to make it your dwelling place. Let the word of God be your compass, leading you through the fog of uncertainty into the clarity of God's plan. As you navigate through the daily chores, the highs and lows, embed your heart in trust, water it with the word, and watch how God turns your barren lands into blooming gardens. In times when the world around crumbles, when every other ground sinks, remember that trusting in God is standing on solid rock. It's relinquishing control. It's allowing God to steer your boat through the storm towards the shores of His perfect will. As you step into each day, each moment, hold fast to this transcendent truth. God is in control. And when you trust Him, watch how He turns things around, manifesting His glorious plans in your life. Your situation is not the end of your story. Rather, it's the start of a wonderful testimony covered with God's faithfulness. And if you agree, then shout Amen in the comments area below. If you've gotten this far and you feel that things will continue to improve in your life, Please let us know by liking and subscribing to the channel. It's a tiny step for you, but it goes a long way. God bless you. Embarking on a spiritual journey isn't a fleeting endeavor, but rather a lifelong voyage into the profound depths of faith. Within the Christian realm, this voyage reflects a serene transition from a mere believer to a godly person. 
But what really delineates a godly individual from a believer? Is it the conspicuous aura of tranquility or something more intrinsic? The spirit of godliness emanates from within, reflecting through our actions, thoughts, and the love we share with others. Let's delve into some signs that might indicate you're progressing on the path to becoming a godly individual, a journey that might surprise you in its simplicity yet profundity. First and foremost, a godly person exhibits a ceaseless growth in understanding and living according to the scriptures. The Bible in Luke 2.42 exemplified this through Jesus Christ, who increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. This growth isn't just intellectual, but it's a holistic evolution encompassing moral, spiritual, and social dimensions. It isn't about self-degradation, it's about recognizing our rightful place in the grand scheme of things. It's about the willingness to learn, to grow, and to serve others selflessly. Proverbs 11.2 succinctly puts it, When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Furthermore, a deep-seated sense of empathy and compassion towards others is a hallmark of a godly person. It's not merely about feeling for others, but acting on those feelings in a constructive manner. The Good Samaritan wasn't just saddened by the man's plight. He took actionable steps to alleviate his suffering, as depicted in Luke 10, 33 and 34. Thessalonians 5:17 urges us to pray without ceasing. A godly person finds solace, guidance, and strength in a consistent prayer life, fostering a deeper relationship with God. The humbleness of a godly person reminds us of the tender demeanor of Jesus, who, despite being divine, embraced humility. They shun pride, acknowledging that the essence of wisdom is recognizing how little we truly know. 2. A godly person exudes a sense of contentment and gratitude, regardless of their external circumstances. They understand and live by Philippians 4, 12, and 13. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. The journey towards godliness also reflects in how we handle adversities. A godly person navigates through storms with a calm resolve, drawing strength from scriptures like James 1, 2-4 which encourages us to consider it pure joy whenever we face trials of many kinds. A genuine love and reverence for God is the bedrock of a godly life. This love propels individuals to live in a manner pleasing to God, making the pursuit of godliness not a burdensome task, but a joyful endeavor. A godly person isn't about a lofty title or an elusive state of perfection. It's about a living, growing relationship with God that reflects our actions, our attitudes, and our love for others. As you reflect on these signs, may your heart be stirred to continue on this remarkable journey towards godliness, bearing fruits that resonate with the heart of God. You begin to deliberately chase after Christ and the things of the Spirit. Those who obey His commands live in Him and He in them. And this is how we know that He lives in us. We know it by the Spirit He gave us. Our earthly journey is a tapestry woven with choices. And when we choose the path of righteousness, we step into a realm of spiritual abundance. It's like planting a seed of faith, watering it with love, trust, and obedience, and watching it bloom into a tree of eternal hope and joy. John 15, 5 and 6 metaphorically elucidates this concept. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. This essence of staying connected to Christ of being a lively, fruitful branch on the divine vine unfolds the mystery of a godly life. It's akin to a river that finds its meaning when it merges with the ocean. 
Our souls find fulfillment when intertwined with Christ's love and teachings. This divine interconnection manifests into a life that echoes with virtues of compassion, humility, and love. This, indeed, is the fruit born out of a godly existence, a reflection of the Holy Spirit's grace illuminating our path. We come to realize the essence of our obedience to God's will. It is not a stern adherence out of fear, but a loving commitment, a soulful surrender to the divine will that orchestrates a melody of peace, joy, and contentment in our lives. This journey towards recognizing the divine essence within us isn't about a blind pursuit, but a conscious awakening, a tender nurturing of our spiritual essence that gradually blossoms, filling our lives with a serene, unshakable faith. Each step taken in love, trust, and obedience is a step towards an eternal companionship with Christ, towards becoming a beacon of God's love and grace in this world. Four. A mark of a person embodying godly virtue is the fruit they bear, a reflection of divine grace and character. Being a godly person implies a life oriented towards a profound relationship with Christ, placing it at the apex of one's priorities, above earthly acclaim and validation. The essence of godliness is a choice, a choice to entwine one's ambitions and desires around the essence of Christ prioritizing divine acceptance over worldly recognition. Now, let's get into the transformative journey of aligning oneself with Christ. It's about nurturing an intimate connection through earnest prayer, diligent study of the scriptures, and a communion of hearts with fellow believers, obeying divine directives, and aspiring to lead a life that resonates with His goodness is the hallmark of a godly individual with a heart anchored in Christ a remarkable metamorphosis unfolds within the core of your being. The aspirations and dreams once fueled by worldly views begin to morph, echoing a higher call. A cadence of love, divine and pure, starts to pulsate through your veins, replacing old whims with a new rhythm of selfless affection. It's an altruistic love, mirrored in the supreme sacrifice of Christ on the cross where the essence is to promote the welfare of others, portraying a readiness to relinquish personal gains for a greater good. This divine alignment also ignites an insatiable zeal to spread the message of salvation. A newfound realization dawns about the imperative of sharing the gospel, stirring your heart towards those yet untouched by Christ's transformative love. It's not just a fleeting emotion, but a profound ache for the lost souls, compelling you to become a conduit of His message of hope and redemption. As scriptures say, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. John 13, 35 The essence of godliness also envelops a fervent desire to share the light of Christ, to illuminate the paths of others leading them towards the abode of eternal love and salvation. The godly path is more than a mere choice. It's a robust commitment to embodying the virtues of Christ in every facet of life. It's about being a beacon of His divine love and truth in a world in dire need of hope. The journey is profound, filled with challenges, yet immensely rewarding as it's the pathway to eternal love wisdom, and divine fulfillment. Through this journey, one truly epitomizes a life that's not only in sync with divine virtues, but also becomes a living testimony of God's boundless grace and love. 5. The signature of godly living isn't stamped on one's material possessions, social status, or worldly accomplishments. Instead, it's etched in the heart, seen in the spirit, and reflected in the actions of those who cultivate a profound relationship with the divine. Distinguishing trait number three unfolds the tale of godly individuals whose lives are not tethered to worldly desires. Their essence is illuminated not by the ephemeral gleam of worldly riches, but by the enduring glow of heavenly treasures. The allure of wealth, fame, and authority doesn't beckon them. Their compass is calibrated to the divine, 
leading them towards eternal treasures that neither rust nor decay. It's a transformative realization that the transient nature of worldly gains pales in comparison to the infinite worth of heavenly treasures. The journey towards godliness also embodies a fearless stance in a fear-driven world. Godly individuals navigate through life with a compass of divine reverence, not swayed by the fearsome waves of human opinion. Their cornerstone is the Almighty, whose approval overshadows the fleeting judgments of men. In the eyes of the godly, God's opinion isn't just a whisper amidst a cacophony of judgments. It's the only voice that holds weight. This singular focus births a profound wisdom and a liberating detachment from the shackles of people-pleasing. The essence of godliness is further enriched by a resolute identity rooted in Christ, an identity that doesn't waver amidst the changing tides of societal acceptance. It's a liberation from the insatiable quest for human approval, leading to a serene acceptance of divine approval. This celestial alignment nurtures a life not driven by self, but orchestrated by divine will. It's an emblem of surrender, akin to a leaf floating effortlessly along a divine stream. In the heart of godly individuals, Christ isn't a fleeting thought, but a ceaseless heartbeat. Their life echoes the profound truth encapsulated in Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This verse isn't just a scripture, but a living reality for the godly, whose lives are a testament to the transformative power of a Christ-centered existence. This journey towards godliness isn't a solitary voyage, but a communal adventure. It's an invitation to every heart seeking deeper purpose, transcendent peace, and a life attuned to the eternal. As you resonate with these traits, may your steps be aligned with the path of godliness, leading you to the heart of divine love and purpose. And if you believe, please let us know by entering Amen in the comments area below. And if you've been blessed today, Please let us know by liking and subscribing. There are times when we find ourselves at a crossroads, clouded by doubt and laden with heavy decisions. In such moments, the whirlpool of life's uncertainties can pull us into a cycle of despair, making us feel ensnared by the shackles of our missteps. It's like walking through a maze with walls that seem to close in with every wrong turn we take. In such labyrinthine phases, the gnawing question that often emerges from the depths of our hearts is, how do I navigate through this? Now, envisage a scenario where at the onset of each day, before the world gets a chance to weigh in, before doubts get a chance to creep in, you pause and usher God into the equation. Envision seeking His counsel before setting forth into the day, before making choices that sculpt your life's narrative, this is about embracing a lifestyle where God's wisdom is the compass by which we navigate the voyage of life. The Bible in Proverbs 3.6 urges us to, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Now isn't that a promise that carries a whiff of hope and a guarantee of divine guidance? When we dare to invite God into our decision-making process, we open up a conduit for divine wisdom to flow through, illuminating our paths even when shrouded in life's dense fog. There's a boundless reservoir of grace awaiting us when we decide to prioritize God in our decision-making. It's about unclenching our fists from the reins of control and tenderly placing them in the hands of the one who holds the blueprint of our lives. It's about trusting that God's plans for us are to prosper and not to harm, to give hope in a future, as promised in Jeremiah 29, 11. As we entrust God with our choices, we also usher in a sense of serenity into our lives. It's the kind of tranquility that springs from the assurance that the Almighty is steering our course, even when the storms rage. 
By choosing to go to God first, we're not just seeking solutions to our problems, but we're nurturing a relationship, fostering a bond that's forged in trust and reverence. It's a humble act of acknowledging our need for divine insight, which in turn guides us towards a life rich in faith, hope, and love. As we journey through this narrative together, let's take a pause and engage in a heartfelt prayer seeking God's guidance in every facet of our lives. Let's unlock the treasure trove of wisdom that comes from placing God at the helm. For in doing so, we're setting forth on a path that's marked by grace, enveloped in love, and guided by the unwavering hand of the Almighty. The sacred words echoed in Matthew 6.33 act as a gentle reminder on the boundless blessings awaiting us when we align our desires with the divine. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you, said Jesus. This profound verse isn't merely a phrase, but a pathway leading towards a life where our concerns are cradled in the hands of the Creator. Isaiah 26.3 further envelops our hearts with the warm assurance of serenity, stating, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind stays on you because he trusts you. It's a divine promise, a gentle whisper amidst the chaos, urging us to anchor our trust in God, to let Him be our first resort in trials and triumphs alike. Stories from the scriptures are not just tales of yore, but timeless treasures offering the essence of life's wisdom. Reflect upon Samson, a man mighty in strength, yet meek in resolve. His tale reflects the trials that befall when God's place is usurped by earthly desires. However, the narrative doesn't end in despair, but offers a beacon of hope that when we realign our lives with God, the shackles of past misgivings shatter. The journey towards God isn't about renouncing the worldly, but about elevating our essence to a realm where love of the Creator transcends all. It's about perceiving the transient nature of earthly attachments, be it relationships, academia, or ambitions. For even the sweetest of worldly pursuits can leave a bitter taste if they deter us from our divine path. John Piper, a shepherd of faith, encapsulates this beautifully when he says, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. Our days blossom with joy when God isn't just part of our lives, but the essence that permeates through every moment. Envision a life where each morning isn't shrouded in dread, but sparkles with divine promise, where challenges morph into opportunities under the nurturing gaze of God, where our hearts resonate with joy, not because of the fleeting winds of the world, but due to the enduring love of the Almighty the allure of worldly accolades may entice, and the road less traveled, the path towards God may seem daunting. Yet the moment we let God lead, the fog of our fears disperses, unveiling a horizon aglow with divine light. It's a journey not of relinquishing joy, but of discovering a joy that's profound, a joy that resonates with the harmonious hymn of heaven. The tale of Samson, a stalwart figure in the annals of faith, embarks upon such a profound exploration. His journey unveils the profound truth that lies at the core of our being, the divine embrace awaiting us when we choose to tread the path leading to God first. The saga of Samson unravels a moment of profound realization, where amidst the ruins of despair and the specter of death, he sought the face of God. Samson's plight, as narrated in Judges 16, 28 to 30, mirrors our own sojourn, where amidst the tempests of life, a serene harbor awaits in the presence of the Lord. His fervent plea to the heavens emanates from a soul yearning for redemption, a heart seeking the tender mercy of the divine. His invocation, laden with humility and hope, reflects the essence of surrender of yielding to the supreme will that orchestrates the cosmos. This narrative transcends the sands of time, manifesting its relevance in our daily lives. When the morning sun casts its first light and the world around us springs to life, where do our hearts turn? 
In the cacophony of existence, the gentle whisper of God often gets drowned. Yet in moments of silence, in the quiet cradle of prayer, our souls find resonance with the divine melody. The celestial bond fosters a realm of endless possibilities, nurturing the seeds of faith, hope, and love within the fertile soils of our hearts. The allure of earthly desires often casts a veil over the divine essence that resides within. Yet as the tale of Samson unveils, the path to true liberation and fulfillment meanders through the divine embrace. The profound transformation witnessed in Samson's final act unveils the boundless grace awaiting us when we seek God's face first. In the voyage of life, storms may rage and tempests may howl. Yet anchored in the divine, our soul finds solace, strength, and sustenance. The fleeting nature of earthly accolades fades in the effulgent glow of divine grace. The tale of Samson beckons us to delve deeper, to seek that which is eternal, to align our hearts with the divine will, nurturing a relationship that transcends the ephemeral nature of earthly existence. In every heartbeat, in every breath, lies an invitation to engage in a profound dialogue with the divine. As we entrust our hopes, fears, and aspirations unto the Lord, a celestial harmony envelops our being. Through the prism of faith, life unveils its true essence as a divine symphony orchestrated by the master composer. The eternal promise echoes through the annals of faith, reverberating through the heart that seeks God first. The saga of Samson serves not as a mere tale of yore, but as a living testament to the boundless possibilities awaiting us in the divine rendezvous. The act of surrender isn't a forfeiture, but a gateway to a realm of infinite possibilities and divine favor. It's akin to entrusting the captaincy of our ship to a celestial navigator whose compass is ever true. The narrative of building one's abode on a sturdy foundation versus a frail one, as illustrated by Jesus, encapsulates the essence of this divine alignment. In the words of Matthew 7, 24 to 27, therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. This is an allegory to a life entwined with God's teachings, a life that stands resilient amid life's tempests. Engaging with God's wisdom is akin to anchoring one's soul to a sanctuary of truth. This anchorage is not a restraint, but a liberation, offering a vista of life teeming with hope, joy, and unshakable peace. The journey may unfurl challenges, yet with every stride taken in alignment with God's will, there unfolds a narrative of hope, of triumph over adversities, and of a joy that's perennial. So as we traverse through the realms of relationships, let the divine compass guide the voyage. When God is the cornerstone, relationships flourish in the garden of love, trust, and mutual respect. The reverberations of this divine-centric approach resonate through every interaction, fostering connections that are as deep as they are meaningful. Each day presents a pristine canvas, an opportunity to paint our actions, thoughts, and interactions with the palette of divine wisdom. When God is the pilot, life transcends from a mere existence to an exhilarating adventure filled with love, joy, and profound insights. And as we make this sublime transition, we unfold a life that's not only enriching to us, but is a beacon of hope, love, and wisdom to the world around us. This journey towards divine centricity is an open invitation, beckoning us towards a life resplendent with heavenly peace and earthly joy. The beauty of God's love and grace is boundless, covering us like the endless sky covers the earth. It's a reminder of His promise, a promise of boundless love, grace, and a guiding light through the thick and thin of life. The scripture illuminates this with a profound simplicity 
in Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. So let's envision a day that commences with a silent, heartfelt conversation with God. A day where before we step into the world, we step into his presence. It's about allowing his words to shape our thoughts, our actions, and our very essence. It's about being enveloped in a divine embrace that sets the tone for everything that follows. The narrative of our lives takes a beautiful turn when we let God pen down the script. It's about relinquishing the reins and letting Him guide us through the path He's carved out for us. It's about the beauty unfolding of a life lived not just by the worldly compass, but by a divine one. As we venture deeper into this divine voyage, the storms of life may howl and rage. Yet with God as our compass, our anchor, we navigate through with a heart full of faith and a spirit imbued with a heavenly peace that surpasses all understanding. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, brought forth a profound truth. He nudged us to walk by the Spirit, to let our steps be guided by a force much grander, a rhythm much divine. When we align our steps with the Holy Spirit, we transcend the earthly discord. We dance to a rhythm that's divine, and we live in a harmony that's almost celestial. This journey with God isn't about a monologue, but a dialogue. A beautiful exchange where we're continually learning, growing, and evolving. It's about dwelling in a space where every whisper of our heart reaches the heavens, and every divine whisper guides our steps. So as we navigate through the voyage of life, let's meet God our first port of call. Let's let Him be the compass, the captain, and the cause. And as we do, we'll witness the beautiful unfolding of a life lived in divine resonance, a life that is a beautiful reflection of His love and grace. Have you ever wondered what it feels like to hear God? You may have convinced yourself that you're not among the special ones God speaks to, or perhaps you think that people who easily hear God have a special gift. Today, God is using this video as a sign to speak to you and tell you what your heart yearns for. In this video, we will show you how God is always talking to you, but you may not always be paying attention to Him. God wants to communicate with you because He loves you and He has a plan and a purpose for your life. You need His guidance and wisdom to bring you into a blessed and fulfilled life. We will also be praying for you. So please watch until the end and open your heart to receive the blessing of this prayer. Remember to comment the word Amen after you say this prayer. One of the most common things believers say is, I really want to hear when God communicates with me. I want to know how to be guided by the Spirit of God. And this is sad because in trying to hear God, many well-meaning believers have fallen prey to satanic influence. Remember that the Bible tells us that even the devil can disguise himself as an angel of light to deceive God's children. In 2 Corinthians 11.14 it says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So since Satan can appear as an angel of light, the believer must be careful to know how to distinguish between God's communication and satanic communication. That is what we are going to cover in this video. It's an exciting journey because you are going to realize that all this time you've been worrying for nothing. Why? Because God has been speaking to you. Friends, understanding that God continuously communicates with us forms the foundation of our reasoning and spiritual journey. He may speak to us through various means, such as vivid dreams, third parties or relationships, sudden bursts of creativity, a persistent urge in a particular direction or issue, or even a distinct thought or mental image. These signs can be subtle or profound, but they always carry a message that benefits us in some way. Communication from God can take on various forms, from a simple association that represents something unseen to an unmistakable influence on our thoughts 
It can even manifest as an obstructed course of action or the sound of singers in musical instruments. I've experienced this many times. I could be listening to music and then my spirit begins to receive clear instructions or feel a pull towards a direction that God wants me to go. Sometimes I could receive clarity about something I had been considering for a while. God can communicate any way He desires. The blessings of the Lord upon our lives, no matter the form they take, are meant for our benefit. Similarly, His communications, no matter the form they take, are meant to benefit us. Just as Isaiah 48:17 tells us, This is what the Lord says, Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. God may communicate with His children when they gather as a community of believers. He may also speak through the scripture, through prayer, moral guidance, discernment, and every aspect of existence. Trusting Him and staying attentive to His voice are essential for our progress and success. How does God often communicate with us through these things? He does so by His Spirit. As in the Bible already told us that the leading of the Spirit is a sign that we are children of God. The Holy Spirit will often prompt us to act on what we've heard, seen, or learned, giving us a deep sense of purpose and peace when we follow His guidance. This peace and clarity are the most reliable way to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit and know that we are following the will of God for our lives. Saints, God delights in communicating with us because He loves us and wants a conversation. Through the Holy Spirit's promptings, we can confirm that God is speaking to us through whichever channel He chooses to use, urging us to align with His divine will and purpose. We are chosen by God for a special purpose, and we should communicate ourselves to uncovering that ability to discern His voice, regardless of our current circumstances. God does speak to us, but we often don't pay attention to His messages. We've been given the gift of His guidance by the Holy Spirit, working through His Word and His promptings in our hearts, but we may ignore them or fail to recognize them. At times, the overwhelming challenges of life or the busyness of our daily routines can distract us from God's voice. If you've ever felt that God is not paying attention to you, it may be that you haven't been paying attention to Him. His word says in James 4.8, Come near to God and He will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. We all long for tangible, clear communication with God but it may sometimes seem elusive, like a distant fairy tale. However, God is always speaking to us, even if we don't recognize it. We might feel as though we are resigned to just waiting to see what God will do, but we must understand that God's ways are different from ours, and He values us more than we can fathom. Dear friend, to identify that God is communicating with us, we can look for three key indicators. The first is through God's Word where He speaks to us directly, engraving specific verses in our hearts when we need them most. With His Word, God imparts His divine comfort, wisdom, and guidance directly into our hearts. In the moments when we seek solace, direction, or encouragement, God has a way of etching specific verses deep within our hearts precisely when we need them most. When life casts its shadows of uncertainty and discouragement upon us, these verses emerge as beacons of light, offering us solace and unwavering assurance. They serve as a source of comfort, providing a profound sense of God's presence and His promises. During our trials, these verses become a sheltering embrace, reminding us of His love, grace, and unfailing support. I've heard testimonies of people who received comfort and deliverance from dire situations because verses began to well up deep within their hearts and, when they rested on those words, God showed up for them. A man once showed how on a sickbed, struggling for his life, he heard the words of Psalm 118.17, I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. He said that he began to feel a pull towards these words. No other verse in scripture came to mind. He didn't even have the strength to pray about anything else. This was the only thing he could think of like hanging on to a branch on the side of a mountain to not fall. 
and he said he finally opened his heart and began echoing those words again and again. The more he said what the Bible said, the more conscious he became. The more he spoke, the more strength he received. After a while, the shadow of death left him and he felt peace. A few days later, he was discharged from the hospital. The Word of God was used as an instrument, communicating God's desire to give life to him. It was like God was telling him, it's not yet time. Live, don't die. You see, through God's Word, we discover a treasure trove of timeless wisdom and comfort, like an ever-flowing stream of hope in a barren land. These verses are more than mere words on a page. They are living expressions of His love and guidance, specially crafted to speak directly to our hearts in our moments of need. They offer reassurance, strength, and a sense of purpose, allowing us to navigate life's challenges with unwavering faith. In times of uncertainty, these verses become our steadfast companions, grounding us in the unchanging truth of God's Word. When faced with discouragement, they serve as a lifeline, breathing renewed determination and hope into our spirits. This divine communication, through Scripture, is a testament to the depth of God's love and His desire to speak to us intimately, guiding us through the trials and tribulations of life. Have you ever had a moment when you felt the Word of God echoing again and again in your heart, leading you to take a step that would honor God and the Holy Spirit kept tugging at your heart. This is a sign from God. He is trying to tell you something. The second indicator that God is communicating with us is through the church and fellow believers, where His guidance often reaches us through sermons or the wisdom of others. However, it's crucial for us to exercise discernment and ensure that the guidance and advice we receive harmonize with the foundational truths of God's Word. For not all well-intentioned counsel is necessarily godly counsel. Like someone once said, good intentions do not always equal right directions. Within the church, sermons and teachings become channels through which God's Word is explained and made relevant to our lives. Pastors and other spiritual leaders strive to communicate God's truth, providing us with insight clarity, and a deeper understanding of His will. These sermons then resonate deeply within our hearts, addressing specific concerns or offering timely encouragement. As we listen and reflect upon these teachings, we discern God's guidance, shaping our perspectives and influencing our choices. Furthermore, the wisdom and counsel of fellow believers can also be a conduit for God's guidance in our lives. Through conversations, discussions, and the advice of trusted friends, God often speaks to us. These insights and perspectives are like pieces of a divine puzzle, helping us discern our path, resolve dilemmas, or gain a fresh perspective on life's challenges. The experiences and journeys of others, when shared in the context of a supportive and faith-based community, can serve as a source of profound inspiration and direction. Sometimes you keep feeling like you have to do something, and then almost every sermon, group discussion, or friendly interaction with other believers point in that direction too. This is a strong indicator that God is trying to communicate something to you. You need to open up to it and follow what He's saying. However, it's imperative that we exercise discernment in this process. While the church and fellow believers can be instrumental in conveying God's wisdom, not all counsel is necessarily aligned with His divine truth. The wisdom we received must be examined in the light of the scripture, as we saw in the first indicator, ensuring it adheres to the principles and values outlined in God's word. This is just like Satan quoted Psalms and asked Jesus to jump off a high place, and Jesus rebuked him. We must understand that God will never lead you against what his word says, no matter how it benefits you or others. Discernment acts as a safeguard against well-intentioned but misguided advice, helping us to distinguish between counsel that reflects God's will and counsel that deviates from it. In essence, the church and fellow believers are powerful channels through which God communicates His guidance and wisdom to us. However, it's our responsibility to approach these sources with discernment, ensuring that the counsel we receive aligns with the timeless truths of God's Word enabling us to navigate life's complexities with godly wisdom and clarity. 
The third indicator that God may be trying to communicate with you is when He places a burden on your heart or convicts you about something for which you have no evidence. So what does this mean? At times, we may find ourselves experiencing a profound concern or a compelling urge to intercede on behalf of someone, even when we're unaware of the specific reason. These are moments when God's prompting beckons us to engage in prayer and faithfully follow His lead. This drives us to seek God in prayer and align with His will. When God imparts a burden of prayer, He is whispering to our hearts, inviting us to participate in His divine work. This stirring within us is a call to action, a summons to approach the Creator in prayer and a reminder that our communion with Him holds the power to bring about change and transformation. It's in these moments that we become aware of our dependence on God and our need to be in alignment with His purposes. The burden of prayer serves as a potent reminder that we are not alone in our journey, but are intricately connected to the divine tapestry of His plan. Additionally, God often ignites a conviction in us about something, a firm belief in something that transcends empirical evidence or rational understanding. It could be a sin we overlooked and from which we need to repent, or a revelation from His Word that would be instrumental in our deliverance. This unwavering certainty can serve as a compass, directing our steps towards God's intended path. It's a testament to our faith in the unseen and the unfathomable, driving us to make choices and take actions rooted in our trust in God's wisdom and guidance. This beckons us to enter a deep communion with God through prayer, repentance, and faith, reinforcing our trust in His divine wisdom. These divine stirrings encourage us to embrace our role as instrumentals of God's grace and agents of His transformative work in the world. God also communicates in ways that may be clear and audible if we attune ourselves to His presence. But we often get distracted by the world's noise making it challenging to discern His voice. However, God is always trying to communicate with us. He desires to share guidance and wisdom with us. We only need to listen attentively and be conscious of His voice. To truly hear God, we must strive for holiness and seek forgiveness for our sins. Sin can act as a barrier, preventing us from hearing His voice. As His Word says in Isaiah 59, 1-2, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. When we confess and seek his mercy, we should also aim to live a life of holiness to maintain a deep connection with God. God speaks to us. He wants to communicate with us. He has something to say to us. The question is if we are listening to Him. Are we paying attention to His voice and His signs? Are we willing to obey His message and His direction? God speaks to us because He loves us and has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Let us listen to Him and follow Him. Let us seek Him and hear Him. Let us trust Him and obey Him. Now let us pray over your life. Open your heart now and receive God's grace. Dear Heavenly Father, in this sacred moment of prayer, we approach your divine presence with hearts overflowing with gratitude. We thank you for your boundless goodness and unfailing mercies that continually envelop us. It's with profound appreciation that we acknowledge your unceasing protection, abundant provisions, and vigilant preservation in our lives. We offer our praises to your holy name for all that you have done continue to do and will do in our journey. We are humbled and refuse to take your unending love for granted, offering our resounding thanks for your unending kindness. We recognize our human frailty and the times we have fallen short of your perfect will. We come before you with contrite hearts, pleading for your immeasurable mercies to wash over our lives. We humbly seek your forgiveness for all our transgressions beseeching you to guide us towards a life of righteousness. We yearn to cling to you, to experience the depth of your goodness and to trust in your promises. Grant us the grace to obey your commands 
and to serve you faithfully, allowing us to live the rest of our lives in the fullness of you. We entrust our every need to you, dear God, recognizing that you are the ultimate source of our sustenance. Strengthen our faith and embolden us to immerse ourselves in your life-giving word, banishing all traces of doubt from our hearts. As your word promises in the book of Psalms, may our paths be adorned with pleasant outcomes and may we revel in our divine inheritance through Christ Jesus. Grant us, Lord Jesus, the courage to face each day without fear, knowing that you are by our side. May discouragement and dismay find no place in our hearts, for you are our God and our fortress. In times of need, empower us with your word and grant us the wisdom to navigate the challenges we encounter. Heavenly Father, we beseech you to uphold us with your righteous hands transforming every area of lack in our lives into an area of abundance. We release the unnecessary burdens that hinder our closeness to you, making room for your divine presence to fill us. Instill within us unwavering trust and obedience, enabling us to fully rely on your guidance without trying to decipher the complexities of your miracles. We pray for discernment, Lord, especially against the sin of pride as we near the culmination of life's journey. Let the victories we need manifest in our lives. Holy Spirit, we surrender ourselves to your authority, and we pray for every other authority in our lives to submit to your divine sovereignty. In accordance with Lamentations 3, we earnestly implore your boundless mercies to usher in a fresh start in our lives. May every form of disgrace and insult we've endured be eradicated. We open our hearts to you, Lord, seeking purification through the cleansing power of your precious blood. Empower us to pursue righteousness and holiness with unwavering determination. We ask for a heightened awareness of your voice to clearly hear your divine guidance. We are assured that you have heard our prayers and we offer this petition in complete faith. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If this video blessed you, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more blessed content. We're here to support you through prayer. Please share your prayer requests in the comments. We'd love to pray with you and join you in faith. Even if you don't receive an immediate reply, rest assured that we're lifting you up in prayer, believing in God's power to touch your life no matter where you are. May God bless you. Amen.